Well, in this video, we're going to show you Modern Events Calendar, which is a very handy plugin to have that has basically every bell and whistle you can think of, as well as a free version as well that has some limited options. There are also some add-ons that you can purchase if you're using the Elementor Page Builder that just enhance the experience completely. So we're going to do a little bit of an overview. So they have the, uh, the page right here. And you can do a free download and you can try it or you can actually purchase the plugin from the website themselves. They used to previously be on a marketplace, but they have since been moved over to their own website um, so they can sell it all there. Um, so some of the differences you can see here for Modern Events Calendar Free, the Pro version, and how it compares to some other versions, uh, some other event plugins out there that you may need. So the free version, as you can see, it comes with quite a lot. Everything over here that's green checked, it comes with a free version. Um, and then of course, this is the Pro version, and then you have three other event calendars right here. So as you can see, with the free version, they already include much more than a few of the other competitors include. Um, and then of course, if you want some of the premium features, then you can also just pay the pro price of $55 for the single site license. You get those updates and of course you get all of these extra add-ons that you can, you can do with your website, such as like map view and directions and, uh, the booking system. So you can actually do tickets right here with the ticketing system. Um, which normally can, you know, as you can see down here, it can go as high as $630. And then is that, you know, like a repeatable uh, plug-in price that you're going to have to pay every year? So there's, uh, if you want to see all of the features and the comparisons, you can go to the website right here and then click on the calendar plugin and you can see the comparison table for the free, pl free plugin, the pro one, and then of course the other plugins that are available. So... I mentioned add-ons earlier, so there are many add-ons that you can purchase uh, for Modern Events Calendar. One of them being the WooCommerce integration, which is an amazing integration because right now there's only a few payment methods that you can use uh, to have someone purchase tickets uh, on your website through Modern Events Calendar. But with the WooCommerce integration, if you have the payment system through Woo, then you can have that be how they check out. So if you have some kind of proprietary system that, you know, it's like third party, no one ever you know, uses it, it's like just for your website, then, and if it's through WooCommerce, you can use it to buy tickets. So everything that's underneath of one roof, underneath your point of sale. They also have extensive integration with Elementor. So they have a short code builder. So it's, they have a visual builder for uh, short codes now. So you can actually see what it looks like before uh, designing it. The form builder for tickets, you have that right here. The Elementor single builder, which means that you can build single event pages with Elementor. So you can style the way they look. Uh, and then of course you have the bundle here, two bundles if you wanted to save some save some money there. Um, and then of course if you're running the free version and you only need maybe one or two of the extra extra things like the booking, then you can just purchased it right here. All right. And of course, all of the other options are down there as well. So let's get right in to our dashboard right here. And we've already got modern events calendar installed. So let's go to our plugins. And we've got Elementor, the form builder, the short code builder, modern events calendar, WooCommerce, so we can show you the integration, and then of course our integration plugin. In order to install any of these plugins, all you do is click Add New, Upload Plugin, and then just choose your file and install and activate it. You do that for all of the plugins that you have purchased, and then from there you should have all of them activated like so. So let's go to Modern Event Calendar. So right here on the left hand side you have all of these options right now for just this plugin. So you have a, a little bit of an overview page here so that you can see all of your events, all of your short codes, um, just some introductions if you wanted to get started. Down here, your licensing, um, and you can, you can have all of them right down here. Your popular gateways, people that are paying, 
um, your total bookings change log, things like that, which is great to see all of this in one dashboard. You have all events, which is where you're going to find all of your events. Now, when you first install the plugin, you're going to have a bunch of sample events here. I would say to take a look at those, make sure that everything, you know, they're, they're helpful so you can actually see how to set up certain events, repeating events, um, every other events, things like that. Add event, it does exactly what you think. So this is where we would go to add a brand new event. We would have the title for the event up here. We have a little bit of a description here. So if we wanted to add some information here, we can just paste in our information. The start and end date for the, for the event. So we can choose May 30th. And then of course you have your start and end time here. You have a little bit more information around here. So if you want to make it an all day event, all the times go away. If you want to hide the event time on the front end, then that goes away. And then you can hide the actual event end time. So people don't really like, what if you have an event that, you know, you don't know when it ends. It just ends when it ends. You can always just hide the event end time so that you have a start time there. It's pretty popular. You can also do a time comment. So it shows right next to here. You can do like a time zone or, you know, letting them know that, hey, we want you to get there at eight o'clock, but maybe, you know, cocktail hour starts at uh, nine or something like that. There's a lot of different options for that. And then you have your event repeating. So if this is a repeat event, you can choose what days or what style. So if it's custom day repeating, we can choose a start and end time, add a new one. Or if it's certain weekdays, we could do, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Or if it's monthly, we can do a monthly event on this day, on the 30th of the day. Um, you can do whenever this is going to end. So this is only going to be repeating for a month until, you know, September 30th. Or you can make it so it's after 10 events, which you can see here. So that after a certain amount of repeats. So it, for this one, we chose monthly and it'll end after 10 months of repeating. You have hourly schedules, so you can do scheduling here, and then of course you can add your time here. So 8 a.m., you know, arrival, and then you can add a new one. And then you want to do 9 a.m. first class. And then of course you want to add another day. You can add Tuesday, and then add some more right here. So we'll keep that there. Event locations. So if this is going to be in a physical location, you can add a new location or you can choose from a previously added location. If you choose insert a new location, name it whatever you want it to be. So maybe the venue name. So venue name goes here. The event location is going to be the address. So we want to do the address here. You know, let's do Fifth Street, New York, New York. So we have that. And then you don't have to worry about the latitude and longitude if you don't know it. But if you leave this here, once you save, it'll automatically fill this in. So we have choose image. So if we wanted to associate an image with the location, we can do so. And then all we have to do is click choose image and we're going to download an image from the web and we'll go here and upload it, select it. We have that. We can choose not to show the map on the single event page if we don't want to. And then of course you can add extra locations in addition to your main locations if you want links to different events. So if you want to add, different event links or more information. So the event link is actually an, uh, maybe like a third party site. So instead of redirecting you to the single page event, it will direct you to the, to the other uh, page. So maybe you're um, doing an event on Eventbrite and you want the, to navigate to that once they click on your event, you would simply put your link right here. And then if you want more information, if they want to register offsite or if they want to, 
uh, have a PDF of a map or something like that, you can put the link for that here, title it whatever you want, open it in, in a new or current window. Organizers are the same, so if you want to show an organizer, maybe it's a specific um, you know, teacher who's going to be teaching a class, you can add a new organizer, name, phone number, email address, link to the organizer page if you want to do so. The event cost, if you want to do a free event, you can type in the word free, or you can do the actual cost right there. Now, I have the booking turned on, so if we want the booking we, to for people to be able to purchase tickets, we can do that. We can do an overall amount of tickets set here. So if you want to set a limit to all the tickets, so if you have five different ticket types, but you still only want to sell 100 tickets, then we can do that here. If you want unlimited, you can click unlimited. Uh, and then we can go through and add our tickets. So general admission, we have the price of $10. And then you can do a price label if you want to. Uh, and then the available tickets if you want to do that or unlimited. And then of course we have a price per date. So if maybe you're going to be more expensive on you know, the 31st, and then you can do that. So this would be, no. so this would be $50 right here. And then you can add another one if you want it to be a different price on another date. And then of course you can add more ticket options. So if you wanted to do senior citizen, you could do $5. And then of course you could do price per date if you want to do that as well. Ticket variations, so if you have other ticket variations here, you can add them here. And then of course we have booking forms, which we will get to as well. So we can also do inherit from the global options, which we'll get to in the settings. Or you can make it so that it is a form that is specific for this event. So for example, for this event only, maybe you need to gather you know, their phone number. You can add um, uh, right here, you can have the telephone, you can do make it a required field, and then put the text there for the label. Let's put that at the top. So we have those options. So we want them to enter their phone number in there. You can also pick one that you've already previously built using the Elementor form builder. And so we can actually have forms that will be universal. So once we make a change to it in the form builder, then it will make the change to the events as well. All right. Let's go back up here. On the right hand side, we have our tags. So we can actually search for uh, different events using tags. We have categories as well. So if you wanted to add a new category, um, maybe this is a conference. And of course we could do event colors. So if we're doing a new event, we can do an orange one. And then we have a featured image down here at the bottom. So if we want it to be here, we'll add, we'll add that one as well because it's a nice full width. So now that we've done adding our event, we're going to publish this and we're going to move on to the next ones. So we have tags on the left hand side. This is where you can add all of your tags just so you can sort them. Same with categories and same with labels. Those are all for sorting and searching. Locations. So this is where all of your locations are going to show up. So if you have, um, you want to make a change to a venue uh, site-wide, you can go here and change the one here. And then it'll put in the longitude and latitude right there for you. And you can also add new locations here if you want to do them in bulk. Same with the organizers. If you want to add a new organizer, you can add it through here. And then of course you can change all of the organizer information globally here if you wish. Short codes. So once you've installed the plugin, they do give you 12 short codes, or I'm sorry, 11 short codes to use. Uh, I added this one earlier. They give you some short codes to use as examples, or you can actually use them in real life. So for example, if you want to have an upcoming events list, 
you can click on this and you can edit this with Elementor. You also have some options over here. So here's the actual short code that you would put on your site if you're not going to be using a page builder. And of course we have our search form. So if we can show the search form and then each one of these is an option for our search form. We can do categories, locations, organizer, speaker, tag. All of these options are available for sorting. And if you choose disabled, then it won't show. Uh, but if you choose the option, then it will show. So we want to show text search and we want to show a drop down for categories. Let's update that. We're going to edit this with Elementor. All right, so we can see right here, this is our list right here. And we have all of our repeating because we're repeating this on the same day every single month for 10 months. So right here, we have all of our options over here, a list view, grid view, whatever we want to show, whatever we want to call it. Counts in a row, we can do three. So we can have three in a row. We want to make it four. We can do that just depending on how wide everything is. And then you can also limit it so we can only show six at a time. And then we have the load more button. Uh, we can show this single event display method. So when you click on this, do you want to do it in a separate window or do you want it to show in a pop-up? We can turn on or off the load more button. And each of these is going to be completely different on a per um, skin basis. So if you want weekly view, then a lot of those options go away because this is going to be a weekly view. So if you want to show this week, next week, uh, the start of next month on a certain date. So we want to show, you know, this one because we know this is going to be the next date. We can do that. Um, the next and previous buttons, we could turn those on and off up top. So there's just a lot of different options. We could do, let's do cover view. So we have a nice, a nice um, cover there and then that way we can show the event with more detail. Clean, modern, whatever we want to do, we have all those options. Of course, we have our filter options too if we want to, if we want to work with that. You can filter it by conference, you can filter it by location, whatever you want it to do. All right, let's exit back to the dashboard. So from there, if you want to add a new shortcode, all you would do is click Add Shortcode. If you're using Elementor, great. If you have that add-on, then definitely add, then do the, with the edit with Elementor. If not, then you're going to go down here to the display options and go through them just like this. Then you have your search form over here that you can enable or disable. Okay, and then your filter options. So this is how you would do it without a page builder for Elementor. And if you do have Elementor, you, then you would use this and it would override all of your settings down here. Once you're done with that, you can just click publish. All right, let's move on to our settings. And there are a lot of settings. So bear with me as we go through these, I'll make it short and sweet, but also go through some details where I see that it's most important. So the general options, Hiding events is something you want to do on the front end. So if this is going to be hiding the events on the front end on the event start, one hour after start, two hours, or on the event end. Normally, I would do it on the event start just because once the event started, you know, no more people can show up. And you really just want to move on to the next one. Multiple day events. You can show on the first day on all skins. So like just the first day of the event. Or... You can do uh, different ones so you can show all days. There's just a lot of different options here. Do you want to remove all of the plugin data when you uninstall it, enable or disable? It keeps things cleaned up if you enable it, but if you plan on reinstalling it later, then you want to keep that disabled. The suffix, so you have the TH like the 12th and things like that, or do you just want to show 12? Choose your weekdays and your weekends if you have different ones, and then that's it for that one. The archive page, so this is where you're going to show all of your events. You can name it, name the title here. You can have the page skin, so it shows one of these, or a custom shortcode that you can have there. 
your category and your uh, status. So your category page skin is the same thing um, as the archive page skin. It's just going to be showing for categories only. So this is where you would go and you would view all of your cat your events for that one category. What do you want it to look like? Category events method. So this is going to be the upcoming events or do you want to show expired events for the category events? And then the event archive, keep that enabled. Slugs and permalinks, you really don't have to worry about changing these. If you do change them, make sure you navigate over to your settings, permalinks, and save it twice. Normally I would take off the MEC hyphen and just leave category or name it event category. So the single uh, event details page. So the, how do you want to do your date format? Um, do you want to do on the referred date or the next occurrence date? Okay. So it shows it on the event date and then the referred date will be um, completely separate from that. The single event styling. So do you want it to be modern or default? And you can see what these look like. If you go to their site, they have extensive documentation where they can show you what they would look like for the um, single and the uh, the default and the modern style. Just choose them both and you can see what they look like. Booking style, if you want it to be at the bottom of the page or do you want it to be in a pop-up, you have those options. Currency options, you pick whichever one you want. You could do your currency sign. Position, thousand separator, decimal separator, things like that. That's all based on wherever you are. Your speakers, so if you want to enable speakers, you enable that. You want to refresh. And then you're going to have the speakers over here underneath the organizers now on the left hand side. Let's go back to it. So underneath dashboard MEC, you'll have the speakers. So you can actually add speakers to specific events. Google Maps, so if you want to show Google Maps on the event page, you got to actually put your API key in here. Um, and then you can do your default zoom level. Usually I do about 16, because that's around street level. Uh, then you have different looks for Google Maps style. If you want to enable directions, okay, you got those two options. Lightbox date format, so however the format you want it to be. And then if you don't want to load the API library for, for optimization reasons. Google Recaptcha. You can enable it on the booking form. All you would have to go to is recaptcha dot or google.com forward slash recaptcha. And then you would go to your admin console and grab your keys from there. Uh, and then of course you can enable it on the booking or the front end submission. You put your site key and your secret key there. Let's turn those off. Exporting. So how do you, do you want people to be able to export the um, event to their own calendars? I usually like to add these because people like to add their events to the calendars. So using Google or iCal is a great way to do that. So I usually leave those enabled. Local time module. So this will show the time of the event based on where the visitor is located. I usually keep this turned off because in the settings, you can actually tell them what time zone you're in underneath of each event. QR code. So this will display a QR code that links to the event on the invoice and on the event page. And we're going to show you these as well. The weather module. So we have the weather module. And if you go to darksky.net and register, they give you a free API key that you can plug in right there. And it'll show the weather for the event on that day um, on the event page. Do you want to do a countdown? You've got two options, plain and flip. Social networks, if you want to be able to share the event on social networks, you can do this. You can turn each one off if you don't want certain ones. I know like Google Plus is shut down, so you should probably turn that one off. Uh, if you want Twitter, if you don't want them to be able to email it, things like that. Next event module. So if you want to show the next event on that event page. 
So the next occurrence of that current event, or if you just want to show the next event that you have upcoming anyway, you can do that. That's great for repeat events as well. Front end submission. So if you want people to be able to submit events to your website from the front end of your website without having to go into the back end, this is where you want to go. Time format, events listing page. So if you want them to, uh, this is where your, your list of events is going to be. So you'll want to make a page, call it um, events, and then add it here. And then of course you're add an events, add an edit events page. So you want to make a new page called add it. Uh, I'm sorry, add event and put it here as well so that you can just put this short code on there and then you'll be good to go. Let's create a new page. We're going to title this add event. We're going to paste this short code. And I'm going to do it with Elementor because I like Elementor. Nice and full width. We're going to do short code, apply, update, and there it is. That looks awesome. We'll get to that in a minute. So we have the uh, add event. We want to enable a submission by guest so they don't have to log in if we don't want them to. And then we have all of the different options here. So this is the different sections that they can fill out or see. So the event links, cost, uploading a featured image, assigning categories, labels, colors, and tags, and locations, uh, organizers, and speakers if they want to add an hourly schedule, if they want to enable the booking options, event notes right here, they can put notes for you. Um, so let's go ahead and save this. We're going to view this page. So we have this here. This is what it looks like when they go to add an event. They put the title here. The paragraph it basically looks like the same as the back end, but it's just easier for people to use on the front end. Has everything here, the hourly schedule, event locations, okay, uh, organizers, bookings, things like that. If you want to add tickets, you can do that as well. I'll remove that. And then of course the booking forms and things like that. We have the event link. So this is if they want to add it like an event break link, you can turn that one off. The more info, the event cost, featured image, categories, basically everything you see on the back end, it's on the front end. User profile is a handy short code that allows you to create a page for users to see what they've purchased already. So let's go here, let's publish this and edit with Elementor. And we're going to enable the short code and update. Let's view this page. So as you can see, I already purchased a ticket for this event right here and it's status is pending. We can see our invoice. We can see how many attendees the time frames, things like that. And then, of course, we have our invoice right here that we can see later on. And, of course, we have that booking QR code that I mentioned earlier. So this is great if you want to create a custom dashboard for your users and then just add this short code into that dashboard so they can see their past tickets. Great, great feature. So the exceptional days, if you want to add um, include or exclude certain days from... Uh, happening so that they won't sell tickets or anything like that uh, event organizers and locations we talked about those booking if you want to enable the booking module we will do month day year for me uh, the maximum dates a uh, thank you page if you want to enable that if you want to do the express attendees so basically if you have five people attending but you don't want to fill out each of the booking forms for each person. This allows you to just take everything from the first person that you filled in and assign it to everyone else. It's great if you, you know, don't need all that information from each person. Email verification. So you can automatically verify their booking or confirmation for either of these events for a paid 
And I usually do this because I really don't need them to verify the booking. They're already going through and booking with me, so they're just going to be paying anyway. So I usually just check all those. Coupons, if you want to be able to have people um, use coupons for your event purchasing. Taxes and fees. So if you wanted to add a, a handling fee, I know some places it's illegal to, you know, up the price just based on, you know, 2.75% just because you get that fee. So why am I not going to just charge it to them? It's all up to you. You can add a fee if you want to do that. Ticket variations, you can add different ones here. Great way to just do this real quick. If you're going to enable BuddyPress, you can do uh, the complete integration with this, the activity on the user profile, the attendees module on the event page, um, so you can actually see you know who's, a, who's attending and things like that. MailChimp, if you want to integrate your MailChimp with all of your uh, people who are purchasing tickets. It will automatically put them inside of your MailChimp. Upload field. So this is where you control what files can be uploaded and what size. Because you can do that with the form builder. And if you're doing the Gutenberg, you can disable it or enable it. Underneath a booking form. This is where you're going to do your classic form builder. So, or your elemental form builder. So if you're going to use a classic form builder and you want to, instead of using Elementor, because you're, you know, you don't have that, then you would go through and add all of your event fields here. The radio buttons, uh, files, whatever you want to do, you can add it here. If you want to use Elementor, then you can click on Elementor and then you can select one of the forms that you've already built with Elementor, if you want to do it that way. Payment gateways, if you want them to be able to pay locally, uh, PayPal, Stripe, or by Woo if you have the WooCommerce um, installed. Or you can make it so they can add it to their WooCommerce cart. So you can do add event to cart. If they're going to be able to uh, add, you know, if they're going to be purchasing multiple events or things like that instead of just, you know, buying one. You can do that as well and we'll click save there. Notifications. This is basically all the notifications for you and them. The booking notifications. This is going to send to the person who's buying the ticket. So, saying, hey, your booking's received, um, and you're good to go here. Uh, and then we'll check with you to confirm your booking, things like that. You can turn it on or off. The verification for your booking. If you turn that on, you have all this. I would suggest leaving all this the same. If you want to do that, there's no one or off because we already turned it off in the settings. Booking confirmation is the same thing. You could turn those on or off or change the settings here. Admin notifications. So this lets you know that somebody booked an event. Somebody has paid for an event. It's got all the link here and all the information here. You can also make it so it sends an email to the event organizer as well so they know how many people are booking their events. Booking reminder. So if you want to remind them about their upcoming ticket or the upcoming event, you can do this here. And then of course you can enable your con job by going into your server settings and underneath of cron management, you can enable this here. New event. So basically if you're using this as a front end submission, if they've add one, then this is going to send to you. Most likely, if you wanted to, you just put your email there. It says, hey, somebody just added a new event. Uh, the styling options. So we have a pretty good amount of styling options here. This is basically if you want to change it from that blue that we've seen. So like the blue. Um, let's go to a single event page. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this blue right here, and these blues right here, these blues right here, all the little highlights you see there. So if we go to here and we change the color to, let's say navy, we can do that. And we'll refresh. And now everything is navy. So you can do that. You can also select your own custom color if you have one. We can add this color here 
hit save and we shows up that color now let's see here we've got the advanced color options so for the short codes you can do the title and the content uh, the topography if you want to change the topography for the headings and the paragraph and if you want to disable Google fonts and then if you want to do the container width you can enter it in here for the theme. Most likely you're just going to leave these default. If you're advanced enough and you want to do some custom CSS, you can enter all of your custom styles here. Those are going to be included so that they're going to override modern events calendar. Messages is just something here that you can change the titles. I'm sorry, the change like the, the verbiage of everything if you want to do that. So if you're not doing like uh, register, you could do pay now or something like that. Or the booking success, success message, you can change that. There's a lot of different ones that you can change here. And then we have our import and export. If you want to export all of your settings, you can download them here. And then you can always import them right inside of the, the options right there. And click import. Now over here underneath of the modern events calendar, uh, we have the add-ons, so you can actually purchase the add-ons straight from your website. Once you click purchase, it takes you over to their website, which allows you to purchase the plugins directly from them. Moving on to the form builder, which is very exciting. I'm very excited about the form builder because there's so many things that we can do with this now, and we can do, um, you know, it's just much easier to use than the other system. So let's add a new one. We're going to name this Kid Events. Or let's name it Social Events. We're going to publish. We're going to add it with Elementor. So with the Social Events, we're going to go over here to the short code builder, or the form builder. Click and drag that in. And we have this. So for the Social Events, maybe we want to, maybe we want to be more creative with it and get there birthday or something like that. So what we would do is we would go over here and we could do a date and make them enter their birthday and make that required. But we want that to be on the same line as the uh, email. So we're going to make it so that the email is half width and the birthday is half width. So now we have those both on the same line. But we want them to be able to agree to our terms. Terms and conditions of the website. Boom. We can do this. We can do checked by default or unchecked by default. We can do half width, whatever you want it to be. So we have that and we can update right there. Once we're done, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And we have our social events one here. Now, in order to assign this to, a, to an event, we would go to the event. Go down to the bottom, okay. And right now we have the classic form builder, but we want to use the Elementor form builder, and we want to click on social events. Let's update this, and as you can see, currently we have. There we go. We we have this now. The general mission has the name, email, birthday that we had, and then I agree. Let's take a look a little bit more about this single event page. So this is the modern style, and I'll show you what the default style looks like in a minute. But we have the organizer name, and this is where all the information would show up for the organizer. The date of the event, the time, and the cost. The location information, so we have a picture the location, venue name, uh, the address, and then we have the category, and then we have the more information down here for you know that external link that we wanted it to go to. We have that next occurrence here, so we have the next event that's going to be happening, so if we click on go to occurrence date, it's going to go to that next event on June 30th. We have the weather, so it's going to show the weather right there. The QR code if you guys want to enable this or disable this on the invoice, this basically is a link to the website, to the event page. And you have your sidebar over here if you want to enable that as well. 
We have the title of the event, all of our long description text that we added earlier, the ability to share the event, the map right here. You can see the event at this location, uh, the event address, and then of course I did that 16 so that we can actually see street view. The add to Google and, I, and iCloud export that we mentioned earlier, great things to have. The countdown if you want to enable that. And then that hourly schedule that we set up. So Monday we have the 8 a.m. arrival and then the 9 a.m. first class. Tuesday is going to be 9 a.m. arrival. And then of course we have our book event. Let me refresh this for a second. We have the event so we can book whichever one we want. So we want to book, you know, for July one ticket hit next go here fill out everything here boom click next ten dollars we have that discount coupon if we wanted to apply the coupon we're going to add the event to the cart and we have it added to our cart the general mission, the title of the event, and the date that we're going to be attending right there. Once we're ready, we can actually proceed to the checkout, have everything here, and then of course all of our payment options that we've enabled in WooCommerce will show up right over here. All of our billing information, if you, since we enabled it through Woo, this is what all of the billing information would look like. Then you would just place your order once you're done. All right, and if you guys see that we have all those options here, the event repeating, all of this is just simply testing it out, seeing what it looks like on the front end. Uh, I'm gonna show you the single event page, the default style. The, this is the default style. Image up top, title, all, everything is stacked on top of each other, basically. And then you have your sidebar over here if you wanted to enable that. And then, of course, we have the modal for the booking. Let me show you guys what that looks like as well. So for the modal, do you see how it's not down here anymore? We go to register, and it pops up right here. Have all the information there. Go to the terms and conditions. You got your drop down. Next, and then you have all of your stuff here. So that's one way to do it instead of having it show all the way down here at the bottom. Alrighty, now that's pretty much everything for the plugin. It's a it's a very powerful plugin where there's so many options that you really just have to go through them all just to see what's out there. Now. For this plugin, let me go to their purchase plate page. So you get the one license, you get all lifetime updates. You only have to purchase one time for one site. $55 for one time. If you do 10 license, it's $375. So it's really a great deal if you wanted to, because like I said, lifetime updates. You get support for a year, but it's lifetime updates. Nobody really does lifetime updates. Then of course you have all of your your options down here. Um, lifetime updates come with all of these and you get support for a year. And you can see that they're all add ones by separated by there. So there, that's really great. And if you need support, um, you can find support directly on your uh, website. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about anything like searching for trying to find support. Uh, you have all of your options here. So if you can activate your license, new events, things like that. So there's a lot of documentation. It's well documented. Uh, it's built very well. I've been using this plugin for probably about three years now. Three, I think I think about three years now. Um, and they continue to add so many features that a lot of other plugins charge for. As an addition, like you have to actually pay for more. Um, so great plugin. I highly recommend doing the Modern Events Calendar. It's very easy to set up and there's so many options, especially if you're going to be doing tickets. Um, 
with the uh, with the events. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'm always available if you guys need help. Um, we will see you at the next one.